encourage everyone to please rise for the playing of our national anthem. <laughs> I'd like to welcome all of you to the graduation ceremony of Dayton High School class of 2019. For those of you who just sat down, we're going to ask you to please stand and join us as the graduates proceed onto the field and remain standing for the invocation. Thank you.
silent as we pray. Heavenly Father, we gather here today to celebrate the conclusion of the long journey that was Dayton High School. Let there not be sadness because it is the end, but excitement for what the future has in store for each of us. It is truly a blessing to gather here today, and I ask for you to continue to shower each and every one of us with your grace. Lastly, I ask that no matter what venture my classmates take part in, I want you to guide them down the path they have chosen. In Jesus' loving and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
good afternoon, and thank you for coming and sharing this joyous day with us. As many of you know, my name is Angel Mason, and I am honored to be the salutatorian of the class of 2019. Dayton, Kentucky is 1.7 miles long. You can walk the whole city in less than 30 minutes and drive through it in less than five minutes. It has one grocery store, two gas stations, one park, one school district, and only two traffic lines. It is lined by the Ohio River and protected by the infamous flood wall. It is the only city not printed on the highway exit sign and is always mistaken for another city in another state. <laughs> it is also populated with 5,427 people, 2,596 men, and 2,831 women to be exact. Dayton is also known to have the oldest football field in the state of Kentucky. And here in front of you, on that very field, are 49 of those residents that today are known as the class of 2019. I wanted to share that information with all of you because it is something we may forget as we grow and our small town is no longer where we, where we reside, but only a memory. So I asked the question, how can such a small town hold so many memories? It is where many of us have lived our whole lives. It's where we rode our first bike down the street and then drove our first car down the same road. It's where we had our first day of preschool and then our last day of high school. It's where we came to this field for our first, first football game and then our own graduation. Today is the, many, is the day many of us have waited so long for. It's the day that seemed too close for our parents but too far for us. Graduates, take a brief second to live in the moment. We are on Davis Field in our caps and gowns, and we will soon become alumni. We are on the same field where we made our last touchdowns, had our last performances, chanted to the fight song for the final time, and where we made many of our high school memories. We are not just high school graduates, we are Green Devils. This truly embodies who we are as a class and who will we become as adults. Being a part of the class from Dayton means being a community, a community where our spirit is loud and our pride is unbreakable. Most of us may not see it now, but our close-knit community, class, and school will become a treasure we cherish in the future. Graduation is not only an important ceremony, but it is the transition to a new chapter of our lives. The chapter we are closing has shaped us into the individuals we are today. It seems as only yesterday we walked into Dayton High School as freshmen. The last 13 years of our lives have been a guided path. After today, we begin to pave our own path with no directions and with no idea what the future holds. I know that with strength, courage, and perseverance, we can accomplish anything we set our minds to. Wherever your path leads, I hope you are happy and continue to strive with ambition. I also hope you look back and remember where you came from. I hope you remember the memories we created, including today, and thank everyone who helped you achieve your goals. With that being said, thank you to the teachers, the Board of Education, the staff of the school district, the community of Dayton, our friends, and our family for helping each and every one of us become who we are. If it wasn't for all of you, we would not be here today. I would like to close with some words of wisdom. We cannot become what we want by remaining what we are. Graduates, with this quote in mind, wherever your path takes you, go out into this world, plant your seed, and bloom. Just make sure to never forget where your roots came from. Thank you.
my graduating class of 1969. Not only was it the largest graduating class ever, it was also known as the worst class ever. <laughs> it happened to be my graduating class. I'm sure wise words were spoken, proud hugs were given, and graduation caps thrown. But I can't be sure because I wasn't there. I wasn't injured in the hospital. I had not been taken against my will. I was at my sister's home in Moorhead, Kentucky. Why? Because I was banned from participating in the graduation. <laughs> because I had broken the rules at our senior prom. In my youth and stupidity, I brought liquor to our senior prom. I want to offer my apologies now to the school, its administrators, my teachers, and my classmates. It has been a mistake that stayed with me, truly, in my entire life. I truly envy you, class of 2019, sitting there one last time with your friends about to embark on another chapter of your life story. So how did a guy from Dayton, Kentucky, who didn't even get to go to graduation, end up on the stage in front of you? That's a story I'm here to tell you. It can be summed up by saying, where you start does not dictate where you're going. I grew up on Thornton Street. My grandma and grandpa lived across the street from us. My sisters and I spent many a day going over there to get Grandma's fresh baked bread and sit on the porch with my grandpa. They loved us unconditionally. We played, I played sports with my friends from early in the morning until darkness wouldn't allow us to play anymore. Summertime, it was baseball. Fall, it was football. And winter, it was basketball. Sports were all that we cared about. Not everything in my life was fun and games. Divorce, abuse, bullying, and thoughts of suicide were part of my story. My parents did not have a healthy relationship. They fought constantly. Many nights I would be in bed, hear the screaming and fighting, and wonder, one of, wonder if one of them would be gone the next day. They divorced when I was in the seventh grade. Although I come from a family of divorce, I've been married now for 20, 47 years. Again, where you start doesn't dictate where you're going. At a very young age, at a very young age, I was sexually molested by a neighborhood friend. Around the time of my parents' divorce in the seventh grade, more sexual abuse began at the hands of a different person, lasting another five years. In this day and age of the Me Too movement, there is a much more open arena to discuss abuse, but 50, 50 years ago, there was no such forum. Those secrets would remain hidden. Today's statistics show that one in four women, one in six men, have reported sexual abuse before the age of 18. Most experts believe it's one in three and one in four. Each week, I lead a recovery group that helps people heal from abuse, addiction, and dysfunction. Where you start, does not dictate where you're going. From what I read, from what I read and see, bullying has uh, taken on a new dimension in a different form, such as social media. Our bullies use physical violence. I was in constant fear of them. My fears were confirmed not long after high school when two of my classmates would kill people and then be incarcerated. Bullying, divorce, sexual abuse, and the other problems many teenage kids face led to several nights that I laid in bed thinking about suicide. I am so thankful to have two sisters that love me unconditionally and that committing suicide was not an option. Still, I was filled with thoughts of why am I here? Where could my life possibly go from here? I didn't let you, I, I didn't yet know that where you start does not dictate where you're going. In terms, of being, in terms of being a student, it's quite possible that I was a disappointment to my parents. That is an understatement. I was a C-plus student. My sister Patty was valedictorian of the 1960 class, and my sister Ree was an honor student in the class of 63. Most people probably thought the smart gene missed me. Simply put, I liked other things better than school. In my junior year, I managed to land the best-looking, smartest girl I ever met, and that's my wife, Beverly. 
After that fateful graduation, our journey began. Full of unexpected detours, setbacks, and triumphs, Dev and I headed off to Morehead State University. Yes, even a C student can go to college. Um, and in our uh, sophomore year, Bev's mom died of a heart attack. She dropped out of college to go back home uh, while her sister Marilyn finished high school. We married our junior year of college, and we had our first child, Krista. We would survive on food stamps, a work shift, and ROTC money. My senior year, I made the dean's list. The C student that graduated four years later with a degree in industrial arts. Where you start does not dictate where you're going. Our first big detour was getting accepted into the Air Force to become a pilot. So much for being an industrial arts teacher. I'd never been in an airplane. And my only thoughts of flying were as a child with a model airplane and watching planes take off and land at Lumpkin Airport. But as you know, your start does not dictate where you're going. My undergraduate pilot training was in Columbus, Mississippi. It was there I would face one of my toughest challenges ever. I competed against guys with degrees from Penn State, Rutgers, MIT, VMI, and the Air Force Academy. They were smart and they were athletically gifted. In pilot training, everyone was on equal footing no matter where you were from, even Dayton, Kentucky. You were an officer in the Air Force first and foremost. Competing against these types of people will be part of your life. You can walk off this field and just take a seat behind them, or you can go out and prove you're every bit as good as them. There will always be people who think they are better than you because of where you came from. Rest assured, I can tell you with 100% certainty that they are not. Where you start does not dictate where you go. You are looking at living proof that a mediocre student can walk on the Great Wall of China, visit five continents, over 50 countries, see the Berlin Wall, hear the Pope speak from his window at the Vatican on Good Friday, see the Aurora Borealis, see the curvature of the Earth from 50,000 feet, go faster than the speed of sound, captain one of the largest airplanes in the world, the Boeing 747, be an instructor pilot for both the Air Force and United Airlines, and finally evacuate 150 people out of Tehran, Iran, on the last military flight into and out of that country. If you would have told my teachers and my fellow classmates this 50 years ago, I believe their, their responses would have been, are you kidding me? That's, a, that's the cleaned up version of that. <laughs> Remember, where you start does not dictate where you go. Fifty years ago at my sister's home, I couldn't help believe that my story was over. In reality, my canvas was blank. It was just the beginning, just as yours is now. Start filling your canvas with great things. Now is your time to go hypersonic, fly into space, create works of art, protest the things that you believe are wrong, to help others in your own community and around the world build relationships that will last a lifetime, and above all, outward, everyone around you, no matter what your job or what your profession that you choose. Past abuse, past bullying, past behavior is left behind that line. As you cross that line, a fresh canvas awaits you, and a new chapter of your life begins. There are three quotes I would like to leave, uh, leave you with. First from Thomas, Mr. Thomas Hood, my high school gym teacher and health teacher. Use your head for something other than a hat rack. He used to say that to me quite often. Uh, the Honorable Judge Foley, Judge Charles Foley, a district judge in the state of Virginia, when asked about why the, the biggest reason why people come before him in court, he said, it's pretty much about being stupid in public. Don't be stupid in public. I am, I can tell you that, don't. And finally, the third one is from Luke 631 from the, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Do as to others as you would have them do to you. Good luck and may God bless you in the ways you can't even imagine.
academic and career ready. Angel Marine Mason. Salutatorian, honors, academic, and career ready. Kayla Renee Abel. <laughs> Career ready. Abigail Grace Coleman. <laughs> Honors, academic, and career ready. Cheyenne Grace Panetta. Academic and ready. Oh my God. Lance Gregory Fleet Jr. <laughs> Honors, academic and career ready. Cheyenne Alexis Gross. <laughs> Honors, academic and career ready. Layla Nicole Bernice Matheson. <laughs> Honors, academic, and career ready. Damian Ryan Freeman. <laughs> Honors, academic, and career ready. Austin James Klosterman. <laughs> and career ready. Virginia Allie Spencer. <laughs> Honors, academic, and career ready. Juliet Savannah Marie Maxwell. <laughs> Honors, academic, and career ready. Alexis Jade Ashcraft. <laughs> Academic and career ready. Andrew Thomas Hansel. Tristan Thomas Fern. Career ready. Daniel Joseph Eddy. Career ready. Emma Claire Donlin. <laughs> Academic ready. Jacelyn Alexis Bell. <laughs> Academic ready. Christopher Lee Ackerson Jr. <laughs> Angel Nicole Brock. <laughs> Micah Thomas Corman. Career ready. Stephanie 
Maria Byrne. Abigail May Fox Brockman. Alexis Diane Gardner. Academic and career ready. Stephen Michael Bergman. Career ready. Tyler Dion James Owens. <laughs> Career ready. Paul Brian Morris Jr. <laughs> Career ready. Gabrielle Christine Matthews. Ready. Michael Sean Marksbury. <laughs> Career ready. Trayvon Levi Johnson. <laughs> Academic ready. Julian Johnson. Nicole Lambert. Woo! Military ready and career ready. Brianna Angel Mason. Jacob Cole Nelson. Academic and career ready. Megan Ida Nicholas. Michael Gage Phillips. Career and military ready. Ready. 
Ready? Gina Elizabeth Payne. Career ready. Sierra Jacqueline Rickman. Academic and career ready. Colton Michael Schaub. Academic, career, and military ready. Haven Marie Thompson. Career ready. Allison Marie Watson. Career ready. Megan Renee Ware. Career ready. Grace Elizabeth Workman. Career ready. As chairman of the Dayton Board of Education, it gives me great pleasure to confer upon you your high school diploma. And now I am pleased to declare you graduates of Dayton High School for 2019.
It is my pleasure to present the Thomas L. Hood Four-Year Perfect Attendance Award to Angel Mason. Lukens. I'm the athletic director for the high school and middle school. And we have two awards um, that have been going on for multiple years. For 64 years, Mrs. Selma Campbell and her family have sponsored the Howard Campbell Memorial Award in memory of her son and of her contributions to Dayton High School. The recipient of this award must have participated in athletics. They must have been active in school affairs and most importantly, of good character. The 2019 recipient of the 64th Annual Howard Campbell Memorial Award is Austin Klosterman. Yeah. We also have a similar award for the females of 2019. Miss Mary Deerstock is given an annual award for an outstanding senior girl in athletics, and these are voted on by the coaches. She must have been active in school affairs and also of good character. The award is named for Mary Deerstock, who's a former teacher and was instrumental in starting girls' athlete, athletics in Dayton High School. The 42nd annual winner for the Mary Deerstock Award is Libby Lukens. Will the audience please stand and join with the graduating class in singing the alma mater. The words are printed on the back of your program. Thank <laughs> you. 